Hi, welcome, Mark. Thank you so much for thank you so much for joining us, Mark. Um, but for those of you who don't know, Mark is um, he he. Um, Mark and I won the um, Paul New Monastics together, although that's slightly um, slightly since COVID has been trying to work out kind of where we are and what we are. And I think we're starting to emerge now with a bit of a, a bit of a few ideas. Um, but Mark, can you tell us first of all, um, just a bit about yourself really? Yes, yes. So I'm, uh, I'm Mark. I'm uh, based at Pakistan United Reformed Church. I'm an elder there, a centre manager. I'm also the chaplain for Bournemouth Christchurch and Paul Council down in Dorset. Uh, I'm not ordained. Uh, I'm a lay person. Um, and I uh, have had the privilege of co-founding a couple of projects, if you like. One's called LifeWorks, which is a bit like a therapeutic structured day centre where anybody can come along and bring their gifts and it's very much about physical things, practical things like carpentry and painting and decorating um, and, uh, and cooking and all those sort of practical skills and uh, brickwork and doing up the building and places and making things in the woodshop. Uh, but also a uh, privilege of being chair and one of the co-founders of uh, Paul Community Exchange, uh, which is very simply uh, based in the church uh, and, the, and the wider community. It just holds a space for that exchange to happen between individuals based on principle, basic principle that everybody uh, has something to give and everybody has something uh, that, they, that they need. Uh, so pretty much bring what you can, take what you need. And which is actually an amazing picture of the human condition actually, because I think there's something quite deeply, we often talk about people being independent living and all those sort of phrases, but actually humanity was never meant to have independent living. We were meant for interdependence. And I think I love that idea of the exchange because actually, however broken you are, there's something you can give. And however sorted you are, there's something you need. And actually, you know, actually that, that idea of an exchange is a great leveller, which I think is, 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 quite, is quite key. Absolutely. So it isn't people being done to, I mean, often as churches, we can fall into the trap of, you know, being the Lord of the manor and doing things to people. Uh, so it's, it's more of a collaborative approach. And actually the expectation that there will be, you know, that there's folks there that, that are far more skilled in any one area uh, than you're ever likely to be um, and it's a bit like we haven't got to that point but I'd love to put a jig big jigsaw maybe one of those thousand pieces up on the church wall with a piece missing uh, with a caption saying is this you? <laughs> well I think that's a that's a great image isn't it because so often we talk about what we what we do um, but actually what normally happens is the church has a program they try and shoehorn people into it rather than this actual idea of who has God called us who, who's God brought with us? How can we bless them? How do they bless us? And this sort of idea of, of, of at the heart of, of what it means to be a community is, mm -hmm. um, I, I, Nick, I never say this word, but reciprocality, is that the right word? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that idea that I, I need and I, and I also bring. And if I, get to, if I bring too much, I can end up having a proud sense of provider and, you know, and um, if I feel too needy, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I can end up feeling like a, a client and actually I guess also with things like lay and ordained labels and all those type of things that you know the provider client thing is massive in our churches and it's actually really disempowering and really unhelpful and actually it means that you know people either get burnt out or 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 or, or, or under undervalued underused underutilized it's about holding a space which clearly needs to be safe there are there has to be limits to keep people safe yeah. um, but not feel like an intruder come and bring their gifts uh, come and be affirmed by sharing those gifts um, and, uh, others but blessing themselves in, in that maybe gifts they didn't know they even had um, and there's something about you know matching the, the needs and the gifts of the community and by that I just don't mean the church community or communities gathered but the wider community as well yeah yeah, in many ways, um, in many ways, um, Parks and URC, we, we, we call it Perk, feels quite like, a, quite like an oasis in there where people just, just come, just come to it. Uh, one of the things that always makes me, uh, that I like, I'm just going to embarrass you now, Mark, one of the things I always like is whenever anyone walks into Perk, normally Mark is very busy doing something and his first phrase is normally, oh, good to see you, put the kettle on. <laughs> that idea that actually, well, you know, the great level of whether it's, <laughs> you know, well, you put the kettle on. You all know this, Andy. It comes to the fact that I'm, I'm dyslexic, and one of the downsides of that is I have poor facial recognition, so I can't remember people's faces. <laughs> so I'm a long lost relative, because they could be. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, so but there's something great in how I do. Everybody gets gets warmly greeted, and everybody gets told to put the kettle on, which I think is is great. Uh, recently, so you're saying talking about the community exchange. Recently, the um, your your project and your work has taken a very different turn with um, with COVID. Do you want to talk a little bit about um, all that's all that's happened, all that's happened over the yeah. last yeah it's a year really or just under mm. a year anyway yeah so whether that's like everyone what with furloughing and uh you imagine a busy church which has a large community center evaporated overnight basically with the first lockdown and bits have come back and then we're shut down again so you know very very different role and um you know probably i'm sure a god moment and not, not an accident we had a call from the food bank uh who couldn't take chilled food on a friday afternoon which we took and from that um spawned a, a food project which is now a sort of community food project which has been running since um the end of march and uh we fed some of the region about twenty nine thousand people with food um which is about 140 tons uh, and it's it's morphed into various projects there's now sort of five arms of it none of it's huge uh, we were working with about seven or eight tons a week and we're working with one one and a half two tons a week now feeding folks uh, but trying to be mindful to draw that back in so it's not all going out that actually we're, we're connecting people back into everything there is at the center or there will be at the center when things get and not just the things that other people run so one of the things we have uh, at least a 50 percent discount so no one's being you know, no one's being excluded it increases that inclusion uh, are people being able to join in with things? Of course, some of these things are really, really important. Exercise groups and Weight Watchers, and that sort of thing. Um, so we've, um, so far, so we've got to a point now where we have a pantry where people come to uh, and shop and make a donation, a suggested donation. Um, we have uh, a service where we deliver to about 35 hostels, about 400 people, something. We don't feed them all their food every time, but we take things out into the community. Uh, and we're working uh, and also we have wholesale so we feed in a, a couple of other big projects probably about a third of a ton a week between them um, and then we're doing a, a piece of work at the moment which won't last too much longer we're a shielding center for the local authority packing up shielding boxes for people who are clinically extremely vulnerable and uh, we're just about to send uh, to feed 410 families in our local schools and we're aiming to do that every holiday uh, until the summer uh, so it's about five tons of food a time which is, which is an incredible, um, an incredible response. And um, just to make it, just to make, just to, so people out there might get a bit of an idea of, of how incredible it is. How many people are in the church membership as a, as a church? It's, it's only uh, quite a small. Oh, this is a bit shame, isn't it? Um, so we've got, uh, the membership is probably about 15 or 16. Uh, mm -hmm. And attendance a, a fluctuates. So we had a record breaking carol service recently, which was 17. Um, which uh, which Andy took, uh, but uh, you know our services can be uh, in low single figures. Uh, so there, you know there are you know some real concerns and issues as a worshiping community. So, so basically, you're 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 doing all of this from a, a really small worshiping community, but a worshiping community that who decided a long time ago <clears throat> they had, that they had a building and they evidently had some 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 vision or someone had some vision, and from a building and some vision literally thousands of a, a tiny church is literally feeding thousands of people i think i think that's a great a great sort of um theological truth that we need to <laughs> need to grasp really i mean it goes back to the thing isn't it you know god can do incredible things with a, a fairly meager resources you know maybe you could say his me his resources in the building um uh, and we're you know we are a small motley crew but you know all these things we've done, you know, the community's won five or six awards, some of the nationals over the last six years for its community work. Um, uh, even though, you know, we could always get the congregation in a phone box on a Sunday. Um, but, you know, it's been through collaboration. It's been through partnerships. It's been through working with you know, people who have passions that are part of the church, may not even be Christians. Um, and it's working with other organisations, you know, and yes, we bear the scars. We've done it long enough to bear the scars of that, of you know, trusteeships and partnerships and uh, relationships going wrong. But an awful lot's gone right as well. Um, and that, you know, but you know, often the church forgets that, you know, it does have lots of assets. You know, it has, it has, you know, we're Christians. You know, with the power of prayer, the power of belief, 
the presence, the brand, if you like. You know, we've been here since 1810. Lots of churches have been a lot, lot longer. Um, and actually, the building. I mean, the building is worth, you know, a couple of million quid, probably. Um, in 15 rooms. Now, we don't use anywhere near those for this project. Um, but it's, you know, it's a huge asset. Sometimes we forget what we bring to the party because maybe we're small or a bit elderly or we're, you know, health conditions or whatever. But actually, it's amazing what God can do um, if people get on firing and, you know, people will come behind the resources. I mean, we, we've got limited resources. Um, and of course, in, in a COVID world, certainly first lockdown, the resources were everywhere. It feels different this time. Um, but, you know, we, I think, raised nearly £60,000. Um, and that's bought food that's been worth a lot, lot more than that, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds. Um, so it's amazing. There's a passion there and some energy. Uh, and it's the and if it's the right thing you're meant to be doing, how things can fall into place. There's something isn't there about that, you know, sort of we I think sometimes we have a, a sort of poverty spirit sometimes where we're almost um we almost have try and find the reasons why we can't do something rather than the reasons why we can. And and we have the, we have the excuses why we why we can't do something rather than the reasons why we can. And actually take that that I love that idea of that, you know, we take we we bring before God what what we've got and God does something wonderful with it. I, I was thinking when you were saying that about the um, story of the feeding of the 5,000 with this kid with his packed lunch, <laughs> you know, saying, well, we've got, we've got a building, we've, we've got some helpers, we've got some, we've got some of this. And actually God brings, brings in, I guess, <clears throat> actually when you're talking, when we're talking about thinking about mission and ministry, it's about um, partnering with God who we, who we discover is, 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 is faithful, you know. But I guess mm. also the other thing you're saying is that actually sometimes that collaborating with other people gives great opportunities, but then also sometimes it can it can be a painful thing because it doesn't always work out as well because that's not, not, not and that can be very disruptive. And of course, it can it can destroy communities. Um, we we will all probably cast our minds back to to similar things. Uh, but you know, one of the inspirations um, for us was the large community uh, and also you know, uh, monastic models. Uh, we're thinking of that, thinking of the uh, Celtic Saint Saint Bridget always set a chair round the table um, for uh, a stranger, Christ in the guise of a stranger. Um, and I think that applies to partnerships as well. I think setting, leaving that empty chair you know, round the project, if you like, for someone to step in and join uh, an individual. Um, and yes, you've got to be sensible and careful. And yes, there has to be some tie up with values and, and aims and objectives. Um, you know, things can go wrong, but it's incredible what you collect collectively we can achieve. I mean, at one point, you know, we had three minibuses, you know, drivers from probation, you know, fridges and freezers, and pubs and day centres, uh, funding pouring in as well, you know, uh, more or less a free supply of food for a donation. Um, so it's, it's incredible, huge sort of challenges, but huge resources. And I think one of the challenges in lockdown is um, hospitality. We are, we're doing this, but, you know, because of the restrictions, the hospitality feels very thin, very conditional, um, and goes against all our grain. Uh, you know, not to be feeding people, you know, not to be, you know, really offering a cup of tea much, uh, you know, moving people people through quickly uh, because of the you know the, the, the disease risks, um, and that feels. Um, and I'm hoping you know, people won't get into that habit, and when we come out of that, you know, we can revert to being uh, you know, having that that chair around the table. Um, you know, we cook together, we eat together most days before lockdown uh, and invite people to the empty chairs around the table. Uh, because actually that's what people share, the most intimate moments. Um, and people feel, um, share the most deepest things uh, in, you know, taking bread together. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, one of the things I love at um, uh, Parkston URC is that we have, uh, most days you have, you, have, you have lunch together, don't you? Or at least you used to. And you still sort of do, don't you? There's still some sort. I know you're probably you're all scattered around the hall a bit, but you sort of. Um, and um, and at four o'clock, was it four o'clock? You do tea and toast, which was always good. So yeah, and we also yep. used to start the day with prayer as well. Now I used to like the fact there was eating, eating, praying, working, and also lots of banter. I think, mate. I always thought that's yeah, was felt like a good a good place to be. Once a month, we went uh, and had a, a day with the Franciscan Friary down at Hillfield. And I have to confess, that's where we shamelessly ripped the tea and toast off, off, off at four o'clock. Uh, <laughs> Good idea, it's always worth nicking. <laughs> uh, 
and it's great. And actually, I think the Franciscan communities and uh, you know, some of the, the, the Celtic and the, you know, the near monastic Celtic inspired communities have been uh, our inspiration. Um, and we are, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Andy's introduction about you know, poor near monastic, I almost feel we could be done by trading standards if we're not careful, because <laughs> we're still journey there. Um, and, uh, you know, it is one of the complications of having a small community. You end up with lots of uh, communities doing things, you know, some great things. Uh, and lots of people who, of course, are trustees or um, committee members, you know, overlapping various things, um, which is great, but can lead to sort of a people being exhausted, but also confusion of which hats people are wearing. Uh, and it can be messy in a small community with lots of different collections of partnerships. And if we were a bigger community, maybe some churches wouldn't bother because they didn't feel they needed to do it or were called to do it or didn't, uh, wouldn't take the risk or what have you. Um, but it is messy. Do you think there's something about the, um, being a small community that you're almost, I think the Fresh Expressions people talk about it being, being called a solo community, that idea that actually it, it moves quickly, it's flexible, um, and actually we don't, we don't carry people really because actually everybody's needed <laughs> you know you, you don't you don't come and join in with the stuff here and think you can put your feet up because you can't <laughs> someone will say yeah can you give us a hand pretty pretty soon yeah i mean i, I like sort of sort of the new community's idea of having these sort of circles of belonging because you know we don't want to be pushing people you know uh you know into the wrong spaces or being ungracious or ungenerous um and obviously it's a way of losing people very quickly if we start pushing them i mean churches can be very guilty sometimes of jumping on people and hoodwinking them into things very quickly. Uh, and, and people, you know, the best world in the world being in the wrong is just out of desperation because there aren't, there's not another square peg to go in the round hole. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to be very careful of that. But it's also, uh, you know, I met a colleague at a conference who said uh, his, his opening line was the sum. Uh, he was based in, in Scotland and he did, they come through the door, had a, a shop, I think, uh, some sort of community center. And uh, he'd make them a cup of tea and then he'd say, do you know, that's the last cup of tea I'm going to make you because now you're part of the community <laughs> and you make it on with everybody else. Uh, and uh, I'm sure he did make the tea, from but it was quite a powerful point. I've not been brave enough to say that yet. No, but you do. You, you have that. I think there's a hospitality in the fact that you say, put the kettle on, which means you can help yourself to the tea and, co and coffee and you're, you're trusted to go in the kitchen and actually, and or make us one too. That, I, think, I think actually sometimes that, that feels more like you're being invited into the family than, than, than you're being served like a client or whatever. You know, I think there's something quite special and precious about that. Yeah, and we've always, I mean, it's that challenge, isn't it, about, you know, if you're going to label people that are part of the community and you have staff and volunteers, uh, you know, Client service users, I mean, what a horrible term, um, is, is great, but again, that can be exclusive. So, I think on one of the projects, we opted for participants. Um, and I know a project where you know your ordained sort of uh, member of staff is leading is not, isn't you know, is just seen as the, the lead participant, you know, no, not vicar or reverend or a leader or anything like that. So, it's and words are powerful, uh, but actually, it's about relationship, isn't it, at the end of the day. Um, yeah. saying about you know i'm going to misquote this terribly but i once said something like you know in our materialistic science society we'd uh, basically settled on individual you know the um settled on individualism uh, but we'd sacrificed communal security um uh, doing that yeah. because there is can't have it all at hand to be part of a community. And we know that, you know, communities sound great, but if you live in one, you know, particularly a residential one, they end up wanting to kill people and, you know, end up you know, driving each other batty. Mm. I think there's a, I think there's a lot, there's a lot in there. And I think, I think too, community is, is both wonderful and it is costly because we both, I guess in that sort of thing, we both, as human beings, we both bring our gift and our need using, using the same picture to a community where we bring both our strengths and our weaknesses, our, 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 our good habits and our annoying ones to, to, a, to a community too, which is a, again part of, the, part of the, the way of doing family well, is that sometimes families are hard work, but actually having a community that's got enough love to hold, hold it together is, is, is I think what it's about, and, but not always easy. In fact, well not always easy, sometimes, sometimes quite hard and challenging and difficult. Yeah. It goes, you know, it's really important about, about visions and values, isn't it? And, you know, I get stuck with words uh, sometimes, but it's, um, 
you know, if, if, if we're singing off the same hymn sheet, we had half a chance, if we fall out, of actually seeing the bigger picture and realising that we're back in again, uh, yeah. uh, you know. And plenty, and plenty of grace to, plenty of grace to cover it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it comes with maybe age and a little bit of self-awareness. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, perhaps God made me, maybe had a giggle because, you know, I'm, I've got some exceptional skills. I have so many holes, so many lacks of skill uh, and ability that the only way I can function is within a team. Uh, like it, that's just the way it has to be. Uh, that's amazing, but it's frustrating as well. And I'm sure I frustrate the pants off uh, a lot of my, my, my teammates. Um, so I apologise to them. <laughs> but that, but that's, part of, that's part of being us in a community, that body of Christ, where we all sort of need and pull together. So brilliant. Thank you, Mark, so, so much. Last, last question, last question. Um, I haven't really asked any questions. I've just made statements. We've sort of bounced off ideas off each other, really, which has been nice. But um, if when you were starting all that you've done, if you're starting it all again, or, or you were having to talk to your younger self, is there anything you'd say to yourself as one key bit of advice to what you'd like to... Oh, it might be a really, really hard question. I might be, that might be me being mean. Prepare for that one. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I, would, um, I would still do it. I think um, I, I really I personally struggle with balance. Mm. Uh, that more than anybody else about balancing life. Um, you know, one of the things that's inspired about the near monastic is the Richard Raw stuff around contemplative social action. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, trying to balance that with the contemplative reflective and trying to mirror that with folks in the community that are activists and others who are contemplative, trying to get that balance. Um, so I think, um, I think probably I, I would say to myself the importance of team. Um, I don't think I probably knew that in the early days. I, I expect the knocks and the scars. Um, I used to go to conferences and people used to say, you know, I've got the scars. And I used to think, what does that mean? Uh, and 14 years on, I know exactly what that means. means yeah. <laughs> so, and I'm hopeful, but expect them, they will come. Uh, you know, if you're working collaboratively with people, that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, um, you know, in all of this, I had a colleague who uh, sadly isn't with us anymore, a trustee, an elder, who I can be sometimes, for my optimism, I can be cautious. And so I was often accused of lacking in faith. Um, and I think, have a bit of faith. And at the moment, you know, we, we are feeding schools and the food, food will run out. And I'm not quite sure what we're going to do. Uh, but it was actually a colleague of mine who isn't a Christian who challenged me the other day and said, come on, you're, you know, I've got, this is going to work. I know it's going to work. Actually, you're a Christian. Where's your faith, Mark? Come on. Uh, you need to go and pray. And so that ended up as a challenge to basically all the trustees and, and other colleagues who were Christians. Okay, let's, let's pray to this, just see. And if, you know, if you're supposed to be here, then it's not going to, the resources won't come forward and we'll, we'll back off uh, and focus on other things. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's not probably very helpful, but a bit of a, a rumble about it really. Uh, and look up, you know, and this is going to be, anyone that knows me is going to have a giggle. Uh, try and look after yourself, be kind to yourself. Oh, I so struggle with that still. Anyway, I, I, I've struggled with that over the years, yeah. I just want to add into that little story, though, that, that the food did turn up, didn't it? You, you, you got enough food. It did, it did. We, we had a call and we went, I went up, did a couple of trips uh, 30 miles up the road to Southampton to pick up three quarters of a tonne a ton of food, which is great, and the local food bank sent us some food. Now, it, it, that clearly isn't going to get us all the way through to September, but it's a really, really good start. Uh, so, yes, it did, uh, which is great, and, uh, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Mark. That's been really helpful. Um, bless you. And I'll, I'll just. And then, 